Today I'm going to bring you a tail of two cables. This is the shorter of the two. As you can see it's about 10 to 5 eighths inches long. And uh, it's made out of uh, RG223 which is a very good double shielded uh, quarter inch cable that uh, is used for test leads primarily. And here we have one that's about twice as long made out of the same uh, RG223. So uh, we'll take a look at these. You see up here what I uh, found earlier. We'll repeat this to show you how I came up with uh, these patterns and what they mean. I've set the analyzer up here for 60 megahertz to uh, 660 megahertz and uh, 100 kilohertz uh, receive bandwidth, video bandwidth of uh, 10 kilo 100 kilohertz as well, which uh, will give us a pretty good uh, tracking generator situation. So I'll turn the tra tracking generator on and uh, it puts it at minus 10 here. That's because I have a 10 dB pad right here. Um, so uh, I've got the thing set for 0 dBm, but of course the 10 dB pad dumps it down to uh, minus 10. And uh, as you see, we have the usual uh, variation due to this particular tracking generator. But what we do for that is quite simple. Um, we go normalize. We hit uh, normalize on holding it down briefly and it puts it right at zero here and I've already said that I want the normalized reference level to be at 10 dB so there's 10 and here's our zero line across here from 60 uh, to uh, 660 megahertz. We'll take my 10 uh, and 5 eighths inch long cable here and put it on this And uh, I've got this set up for uh, 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 5 dB per division, by the way, just so that we can see the uh, results a little better. And as you see, we're down almost at 35 dB here. And uh, we're down about 30 here. And that's a typical way things would go. This would be a quarter wavelength. This zero point would be a half wavelength. And this would be a uh, three-quarter wavelength. So you could use either this or this um, for a quarter wavelength section to match between say two uh, bandpass filters, cavities, uh, or two um, or a, in a duplexer. And the reason this works is because this end is open therefore this end is effectively shorted here and effectively shorted there based on the length of this coax and its dielectric constant and so forth which we'll get into a, a bit later. Now, let's save uh, that particular one. So I'll come up here to uh, trace and uh, the trace type, I'm going to save it, but we want to see it. So instead of blanking it, I'll hit freeze. And now that uh, display is frozen. Then I'll go back to trace here. Well, actually, I'll just uh, step over to the second one, which is presently blank and uh, we'll make that clear right and as you see it uh, is right over the top of the other saved trace now we'll take our double length cable here this is actually 20 and 7 8 so it's a little off from uh, being twice uh, the 10 and 5 8 well I should point out that there's also uh, between here and uh, the cable here or the uh, connector here, about a, uh, looks like a quarter to three tenths of an inch. We'll, we'll uh, deal with that later. But anyway, that, so there is some there that has to be accounted for as well. Pull that one off and put this guy on. Now those of you that have done this before will recognize what's going to happen here and what did happen, which is that we have a the quarter wavelength here on the shorter cable which is a peak on the longer cable because on the longer cable this point is about half a wavelength this is its quarter wavelength this is its three quarter this is its one wavelength this is its uh, five quarters 
and this is its one and a half wavelengths, and this is its uh, uh, seven quarters. So that's the way that goes, and you notice that there's correlation here, and this cor uh, these are identical because they're both multiples of a half wavelength. Uh, it's the half wavelength point of this one, and it's the uh, a one wavelength point of this one. And uh, then here we have uh, pretty good correlation between these, but parasitics in the in the cabling here, of course, will offset things a little bit by that uh, um, frequency, which is up there near 600 megahertz somewhere. So there you go. So that gives you the relationships that uh, we will have uh, a quarter wavelength here and a half wavelength there which correlates to the quarter wavelength here because it's the cable's twice as long. Let's uh, use the peak marker and find the minimum uh, search here which will give us the minimum peak which happens to be uh, right here 92.0 megahertz and um, this will be a little less accurate uh, because of the fact that uh, we, we are in such a wide sweep and there's only uh, 600 points across here. But let's um, also make sure we have it as accurate as possible by going back to sweep and making sure we're on ACCY, which is accuracy for the uh, auto sweep time. So uh, we should be as accurate as we can be. Um, and sweep time is about 180 milliseconds, which is a reasonable amount. And then uh, let's go back to the peak here. Go to the second screen by pushing the down button here. There's screen number two in the peak table. And we'll turn that on. And it's going to find all the peaks. And there's a peak at 181. About 180. Well, it's bouncing around from 181 to 183. So <laughs> there you go. As I said, not the highest accuracy in the world at that point with the wide sweep. 2 is uh, 372 and uh, 566. So that's uh, the general uh, region. And if you want to find it more accurately, of course, you can uh, narrow the bandwidth uh, to only, you know, have maybe that much and, or, or even uh, just, just this much if you're looking for that one. And you'll get a very accurate reading of the, uh, of the null or the peak, as the case may be. Um, but again, I'm going to reiterate that this is a quarter wavelength that's three quarters, five quarters, seven quarters, and this is a peak of a half wavelength, one wavelength, one and a half wavelengths. So uh, that's and they correlate to the half uh, half size cable, which uh, here's your uh, quarter wavelength and three quarter, and this is the half wavelength. And then up here somewhere there will, will be another one you see rising here and going here that will correlate again at uh, two wavelengths. So two wavelengths is uh, uh, what's going to be up, up off the screen here. Now, uh, as I said, there is some lack of correlation here because of the parasitics that are in these cables. That's the, the inductance and stray capacitance. And, and also, frankly, that, that little puppy right in there even though it's surrounded by this metal, is somewhat of a radiator, so it's somewhat of an antenna. Um, it uh, is uh, something that people don't realize. In, in fact, a Type-N connector, which is very similar to this, except it has the big uh, uh, threaded uh, uh, barrel. Um, and, then, and also the BNC here is, is pretty good, but uh, your type, quote, UHF, unquote, is not so good because uh, a UHF connector, let's see if I can find one here in my box, uh, don't have very many UHF, oh here, this this will do. Uh, you can see this is basically an antenna. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you push that up, up it, it, it's it got metal around it, but it's pretty far away, number one, and uh, still some sticking out there, number two. And uh, when it's not screwed on, it definitely is an antenna. So that's something that you have to remember about connectors when you're trying to have the best isolation possible. 
To calculate uh, wavelength in millimeters, take 300,000 millimeters and divide by the frequency in megahertz. And uh, when you divide uh, 300,000 by 181 megahertz, you get 1657.459 millimeters. Of course, we're more conveniently uh, doing things in inches, so multiply the uh, answer by 0 0.03937 to get inches. So one wavelength is 65.254, um, half wavelength is 32.627, and quarter wavelength is 16.314 megahertz. But RG223 has a velocity factor of 0.66667. Thus, the long cable that uh, we have should have been 21.751 inches. And the short cable should have been an actual length of 10.876 inches. Um, since our short cable is actually measured at uh, 10.625 or 10 and 5 eighths inches, uh, we showed there is an additional 0.3 inches in the BNC T connector. The actual length for this cable plus connector is 10.925 inches, which is very close to the expected length, but about uh, 0 0.049 inches longer than we calculated it should be. Which is why most combiner duplexer vendors will have a wall of cables and well-equipped shops in uh, two-way radio shops. This is Telewave's wall of cables, Telewave being uh, where I work. They take the cable that is closest to what they think it should be based on the frequency, but they may have to shop around on either side of it to actually get the proper match and uh, lowest loss depending on uh, parasitics. And of course you have to take into account the loop lengths uh, uh, at 1 and 5 here, the cable lengths at 3, that's the cable between, and the connector lengths uh, at 2 and 4. They should all add up to a quarter wavelength at the desired frequency for this bandpass uh, dual cavity filter. Um, to a combiner uh, you would uh, take into account the lengths of uh, uh, other things like the uh, junction and uh, connectors for that. So this is the, the kind of thing that you have to be concerned about when you're trying to uh, work with this type of equipment.